Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master in the Word of God. Thank you for joining me again today. And uh, we're going to continue on our study of Jarius and expecting delays. You're on the expressway, you're trying to get somewhere, you're, you're moving, and all of a sudden there's a sign you hate to see. And the sign reads, expect delays. And that same sign that is on the expressway is also on the expressway of life. Sometimes there will be delays, but a delay is not a denial. And that's what Jarius has found out, who's trying to get Jesus to his sick and dying daughter. But there's a delay. There's a crowd that's delaying Jesus and Jarius from getting to Jarius's house. There's a sick hemorrhaging woman who's delaying Jesus and Jarius from getting to the house. And we're told that the delays have been costly because some messengers come to Jesus and to Jarius in verse 35. And this is what they say. Jesus said to her, this is the sick woman, the hemorrhaging woman, my daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your trouble. While Jesus was saying this, some messengers came from Jairus' house and told him, your daughter has died. That's irreversible, people. At least we think it's reversible. Nothing is reversible with God. Why bother the teacher any longer? In other words, why, why keep praying? Don't pray anymore. But I love this. Jesus paid no attention to what they said. And if you want to get somewhere in life, you got to learn that you cannot pay attention to everybody. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just talking. But told them, and Jesus says to Jairus, don't be afraid, only believe or keep on believing. Just like that hemorrhaging woman who kept believing that she could get healed, although she'd been sick 12 years, although she uh, had spent all of her money, she believed that Jesus could heal her. And you have to keep on believing, never stop believing. Then he did not let anyone else go with him except Peter, James, and John. So he takes Peter, James, and John to Jairus' house. And notice what happens when they arrive at Jairus' house, where they saw the confusion and heard all the loud crying and wailing. Now, let me explain what's going on here. In the days of Jesus, they had what was called professional mourners. And according to the Jewish Talmud, that is like a commentary on Jewish life, in the Jewish Talmud, it was required that even the poorest of people should pay for some professional mourners. Now, they're being paid to cry in the well. And whenever someone died, you were supposed to do several things. You were supposed to tear your garment, especially around your heart. You tore your garment around your heart so as to say, my heart has been torn, my heart has been broken by this death. Then secondly, you would hire professional mourners. And these professional mourners would come, especially the flautists who would come and play the flute and they would play music in discord. And, and there would be women, especially you could afford it. And you, the, the more you could, you could more you could pay these women to just wail and cry and play uh, dis, disharmony in the music. There was disharmony in the music. They intentionally played bad sounds just to make everything uh, just as tumultuous as it could possibly be. Jesus is going with Jairus, and guess what the people are doing? They're sitting there performing, and they're being paid. But notice it's a performance. It's part of the death industry. They're getting paid. It's a death industry. We always have to be careful never to allow ministry become to become a commodity. It's possible that a preacher can, can preach just for money or it becomes a profession not as a passion to want to bless people it's possible that it can happen or that you can have a gospel music industry where the goal is not to glorify god with gospel music or to bless people with gospel music but simply to become famous to make money to become popular there's always a, the danger of allowing ministry to be commoditized or commercialized commodified and commercialized. And we have to fight against that because that's when ministry is no longer ministry. And these people who were crying and wailing were professional mourners. But notice what Jesus did to these professional mourners. He went in and said to them, why are all this confusion? Why are you crying? Why are these flautists here? The child is not dead, she is only sleeping. Now, who's right? Is she dead or is she sleeping? Both 
All right. Jesus says she's sleeping. The messenger said, remember, she's dead. Who's right? The messengers or Jesus? Both are right. Because in the Bible, sleeping is nothing but another metaphor for death. So when you have a child who has to get up in the morning to go to school and they're sitting there asleep, guess what you have the power to do? You have the power. They look like they're dead, but you have the power to wake them up. And just the same way you have the power to wake up your child so they can get up and go to school, God, through Christ, has the power to wake a man up the dead. But notice that verse 39 again well, no, verse, verse 40, excuse me, verse 40 says, they started making fun of him. Why do you think they're making fun of Jesus? You would think they'd be happy when Jesus brings his good news. He's making fun of him because guess what? They're on the payroll and Jesus is going to put them out of business. They're not going to get their paycheck because the girl is not dead. So they were expecting to get a pay. So Jesus is putting these professional mourners out of business. So they laughed at him. They wanted the father to believe the girl was dead. Like people want you to believe certain things are hopeless. And it says, and, and, and the three disciples went into the room where the child was laying. Notice what he did. He, he, they started making fun of him. He put them out. Now, here's the powerful point to ponder. The powerful point to ponder is if you're going to get your blessings, some folk got to go. Amen. He put them out. Who do you need to put out of your life who's making fun of you because you just declared she's asleep? Or you just declared, I'm going to get this blessing. You just declared, I'm going to see this fulfillment of a dream. And these negative people will laugh at you and make fun of you and make mockery of you. Listen, we talked about several days ago, Jesus paid no attention to them. And then you're going to go a step further. Some folk have got to go. He put them out. That's the powerful point to ponder, that you put some people, amen, out. And guess what? He put them out and he took the little girl by her hand and said, Talitha kume, that's Aramaic. I like that. We think that Jesus spoke Hebrew. He didn't speak Hebrew. He was he spoke Aramaic. Aramaic is street Greek, street Greek, street, street Hebrew. So Jesus was street guy and the people of his village were street people. And he says, Talitha Kume, which means little girl, I tell you, amen, to get up. And just like you wake up your child who's asleep. Jesus wakes up the dead who are asleep also. Amen. What's the powerful point to ponder? Here it is. In order to see some miracles take place in your life, you got to do like Jesus. He paid no attention to them. You got to do like Jesus. You got to put some people out because they are inhibiting and blocking you from getting your blessings and they're interfering with your faith. Jesus put them out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and bless your people today. Help us to keep on believing in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend to you the invitation to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here at newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. But until tomorrow comes when we'll pick up on this teaching again, you stay safe, stay sane, and remember God is still in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.